you're listening to Local Music Show with John Sinclair and Kevin Gorn. Yeah. But you've got guests with you now. We have indeed, haven't we? In the studio we've got The Bench That Rocked. Welcome, lads. Or oh, we got half of The Bench That Rocked, haven't we? Yes. If you'd like to introduce yourselves. Uh, I'll, I'm, uh, Harold. No, rhythm guitarist. Very quiet rhythm guitarist. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll try he, he is a very good, quiet rhythm guitarist there. Uh, but not on guitar, though. It's quite loud on guitar. Just yeah. Little, like, sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it's a bit loud. Yeah. Uh, I'm Billy. I'm the uh, bassist and the lead vocalist. Excellent. Welcome. Now, I've got to ask you first of all, John's burning question is, <sighs> what about the name then? How did that come about? Uh, <laughs> right. I said this last time when we spoke to you, I think, you as do. well. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Everyone asks it. I just had an idea of creating this bench that rocked, and then we were struggling for a name. But how did you get that idea? Uh, yeah. I don't even remember anymore, to be honest. It's like uh, a subliminal thing came yeah. through the night. If you had a baby on a bench, you'd probably want to rock <laughs> yeah. it. It was. Uh, what was the inspiration? Oh, no. Inspiration? I remember what it was. It was that I was tired. Uh, you can, <laughs> I'm a lazy speaker, and this is like a sort of reflection of how lazy I am. <laughs> I was tired of sitting on a rocking chair and having to rock more than once, like with my feet. So then decided to make a bench that would rock once and then just keep rocking for ages. Okay. All right. and a, then, a bit like a clock, in a way. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a pendulum. Yeah. 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 Um, That's yeah. fairly straightforward. Yeah. What do they call uh, it when those, when those clicker things go together? It's like... Um, a me- yeah. Yeah, me- yeah, you know, when they go together. Like but kinetic balls. That's, yeah. That's the things. Yeah. And it just carries on. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah. so excellent. Well, I'm glad we find that found that out. <laughs> that was actually quite interesting, actually, wasn't it? I think that was more interesting than I, than I seem to remember. Yeah, I, but I'm wondering what the rest of the band thought when you said, uh, how, "What's called well, the bench that rocked?" It was temporary. We said, "Right, we'll, we'll, we'll just have it temporary, and then we'll think of something else." But we never thought. Of something well, else. originally, I only said it for a joke. I didn't actually think. <laughs> they did. I didn't think they'd go. Oh that's, yeah, we'll see, take that. That's the real story. <laughs> I actually quite like that name though because it, you know you remember it don't you and it can be abbreviated to TBTR mm-hmm. which is okay uh, I'm never going to remember that TBTR okay oh, okay. Well, so I prefer the bench to rock to be honest yeah <laughs> me too really. so how, lo- how long have you guys been around now uh, just over a year now I think yeah just over a year I was say, not long you, you yeah. seem to be you seem to have made a good progress on the local music scene you seem to be everywhere is, is that what you're trying to do just sort of get your name out everywhere yeah really we just sort of want to yeah do as much as possible really we're always happy if we're working and, and play as much as, yeah. as trying to build up the local fan base yeah because when, when was it last last time i saw you you were playing acoustically weren't you at the leicester music festival uh yeah that was they didn't they said to us they didn't have enough room for a full band so we sort of just the practice before the, the day before we went right oh, let's Let's just try acoustic stuff then, mm. and then so we just went there, not really knowing, and just played quite a few acoustic sets. Actually, we was on. So now, as a result times. of that, are you going to do acoustic se- songs as well? Uh, well, yeah, we can uh, do we can do acoustic sets as well as on our more full rock yeah. stuff now because we've transposed everything down that we do, that we'd normally do to acoustic because that makes you really versatile now because you do covers your own stuff and acoustic stuff so you can play all sorts of gigs and venues can't you as well okay why don't we play one of your songs coming up run was it run and hide yeah do you want to tell yeah. us a little bit about that yeah all oh, right um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll do it won't get you into any trouble on that no any ex-girlfriends or anything uh, current ones N- it didn't ones. it didn't last time so right. you know uh <laughs> although that was a matter for the police we'll just ignore that oh. <laughs> um <laughs> there's somebody putting their hands over their face at the back yeah. after you said that for some reason right, right run and hide yeah go um, on. <laughs> it's about i actually don't know what it's about do you let's just I play d- it. Yeah, yeah let's, let's just, just play it <laughs>
Yes, love that song. Uh, do, so you play covers as well, don't you? Is that right? Uh, yeah, we try and like mix and match with our set, play a couple of covers, a couple of originals. Just I suppose, do you vary it depending on where you're playing and what gig you're playing at? Mm, yeah, we uh, tend to play more covers if we were playing a full gig of our own where we're the only ones on, just for everyone else's benefit, really, so they're not sitting listening to stuff that they don't really know. Yeah. But places... Where we're only doing half an hour or so, we'd play our own stuff to get that out there. What's really. your favourite covers? Oh, uh, we've only recently we've only gigged it a couple of times, but the chain by Fleetwood Mac is a really oh, yeah. oh, that's yeah. a fun one you, to play. Formula One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's um, there's quite a few actually. <laughs> Tainted Love. Yeah, Ooh, I just hear our manager in the background saying we stole it from her band. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> n- nah, of course not. Uh, <laughs> Well, I think a few else? other bands have done it as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, while we were off air, I brought up the fact that you said uh, originally that you, you played bass and sang, and I thought that was quite unusual. There was a bit of a debate in the studio, but we decided that it is. So, And it's kind of difficult, your manager was saying as well. Uh, yeah, because, well, at first we didn't really have a bassist. I was just vocals, and... Uh, Ah. So we needed a bass, so I just sort of picked it up and said, fine, I'll do it, as well as singing. But well, you um, just picked it up and did it? Yeah, well, I could play a bit of guitar beforehand, but not really had anything to do with bass. To be fair, you did pretty much learn bass on the way, like, you know, you didn't know it before. <laughs> nah. So wh- why is it difficult? Because I'd always thought bass, to me, looked like um, it might be a sort of simpler role to play so I thought perhaps bass might be quite easy to sing as the same thing. I think time. it's underrated personally but I yeah I'd say it's a bit depending on what you're playing really but um, yeah th- I'd say it is probably one of the easier instruments to play uh, than guitar or drums and. but you're saying it's difficult to sing along to uh, yeah because usually the bass follows the drums really and uh, the the vocal sort of follows the, the guitar and the melody of the guitar and stuff but uh so I'm sort of having to do two at once following both but oh I see so, so sometimes it can be quite confusing but again depending on what you're playing can vary on how difficult okay, it is okay so it's actually easier to play a, a, a lead guitar and sing at the same time uh, yeah I find it yeah um, 
because when we go acoustic, I play guitar as well, so I find that a lot easier to do than yeah. play bass and sing. Next guest in the studio is DJ Marshall. Uh, as you can tell, this is going to be a bit different. We're going to play a track because I've got three tracks to play between now and seven. We're going to chat as well. Uh, this is called uh, Storm Racing.
Uh, G.J. Marshall, uh, that's called uh, Storm Racing, and uh, the man himself. Did, did we call you G.J.? <laughs> that's fine, yeah. G.J. is me. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And uh, Kevin's here as well. Uh, we've got right. three tracks from three different albums, so how long ago was that uh, recorded? Uh, it was straight after the uh, Music Meadow, um, and that was in 2012. So, yeah, I came out with um, um, The Mellow Mind, and... Um, um, that that would, came out within about six six months of uh, Music Meadow. I was really on a roll there. Um, and then a year later, I came up with Motion and Repose, a um, bit more soundtracky, a bit more um, um, soundscapes, um, with mixed in with some really sort of kind of punchy tracks. And then the latest one, which has only been out for a month now, is Places. Um, we've got a track from that, I uh, think that's uh, Himalayan Bass Camp, we're going to play from that in yeah. a bit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in between, we've got one from a different album. So we're, we're kind of covering three albums here, but this is uh, something you've been doing for some time. So how, just remind us how this kind of started. It, uh, it was um, when I was uh, um, uh, about 15 years old, I had my first synthesizer, and uh, I was totally into electronic music at the time, and um, uh, I went through different genres, um, mm. but I've always come back to electronics um, and, and the music... Um, uh, possibilities with electronics and and now it's just totally um uh in a place where you can um create um using you know the latest um, most exciting equipment it's, it's fantastic yeah but you didn't want to join a band you wanted to do very much your own thing did you because obviously you just look after you so you got nobody else to satisfy really well i was i did go in in, in bands i was in about 10 different bands really? um and uh yeah you're right you you can do your own thing um if, you, if you're doing it on your own um but I, I never reached the point with a band that um it was everything was totally happy and and uh you know you're really going for it um but with my own music i've I'm, I've, I've got that so yeah and what's so, the process of writing then is it just kind of playing around with the synthesizer coming up with a bit of a uh, a, a kind of a tune of some sort and then building around it how does it work um it, 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 I can do it that way. Um, I've got about um, three or four different ways of, of, of approaching writing. Um, mainly, uh, I'm sitting down with, a, with an idea of, of uh, sometimes a visual image. Um, uh, but in the last, last albums that I've done, it, it, they have mainly been visual images that I've had. How can you get a... What, what, what do you mean by a visual image? Uh, OK, let's, let's just take something quite simple, um, like um, a, a stream... Uh, of water right. passing through you, uh, sorry, p- passing through, and, and, and inside you, you're thinking, well, how can I reflect that with music? With, with um, music soundscapes, you could say, right, well, it can be just a gentle kind of um, uh, uh, melody that's running through um, with uh, c- calm sounds. So you, you then play around. So you've got the image. You then play around with the keyboards, and then until you get something, you think, yeah, that sort of generates that kind of image. It sounds it, like it a bit can work like that. Yeah, uh, streamish. Uh, and also you can i can think right i want this particular sound and i've got that in my head and i can work through the um synthesizers and actually get the sound Do, that, that mm. i want I, I mean obviously you know i'm a big fan of vivaldi four seasons and we know what that does it kind of represents it's kind of that sort of thing isn't it really when you're kind of representing something yeah yeah it, it is um and that's a beautiful piece of music um and and uh that's one thing i've done with the latest album is to, is to use more conventional um, uh, instruments, um, but again, using um, the latest technology to to create, create this, so I can compose and actually listen to them well, as I'm composing. I'm actually go, go into a, pl- a place where um, you've got that sort of mental stream of of, um, of melody or, or, or a composition running through through it. Now, with most writers, we talk about do the lyrics come first or the music. <laughs> this is a bit different. But is there ever a temptation to say, oh, you know, why don't we have a somebody singing over it uh well you i suppose the way i approach it is is does the melody come fo- first or or the or the harmony or the background yeah um and and either can come first it's whatever it is is what's in your mind or what's most exciting or what's most um I- I- um inspiring to to carry on writing writing the the, the music so obviously the the focus of your music is the the scenic uh melodic landscape isn't it so Whereas with music, with um, with vocals, it's obviously about a story. Whereas in yours, it's it's about a, a landscape. Yeah, I mean, I, I, get, I guess I try and um, put uh, put a story in there as well. I mean, with with the, with the places album, I'm I'm trying to go around the globe um, with different kind of um, uh, places in mind, and they're, they're supposed to be um, you know inspirational pieces. pieces. Um, and I've certainly got an image um, like the, the track that's, that's um, going to be played, uh, Himalayan Base Camp. Um, it's it's the start of where you know people climb Everest, um, oh, right, and, yeah. and it's trying to picture that scene 
Um, uh, and and I, I'm a, uh, I did a bit of climbing myself, and and, and I've been on, standing on top of mountains, and you get this amazing tranquil yeah. peace and, and excitement as well. Okay, let's uh, play a track from uh, this is from the album uh, Motion and Repose, and Walk and Skip. It kind of says what it does on the tin, does it? It it, it starts out that way. <laughs> um, it gets quite a bit of an energetic Walk and Skip at the end. But <laughs> okay, we'll we'll play this, and we'll talk a bit more. Okay. Not sure the police cars on there. Uh, no, I didn't have that one. <laughs> you could have that <laughs> outside all ambulance awareness. Uh, walk and skip uh, some uh, GJ Marshall's in the studio from the album Motion and Repose, and all this stuff's available on iTunes and stuff, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you can download it instantaneously. It, so. That's right. We're on um, on, on the, many of the streaming um, services as well. I'm yeah. just wondering, GJ, on on your album Places, the latest one, right? You were talking about a story. So the first the first um, piece on there is Places. Followed by Himalayan Base Camp, followed by Zamzi- Zambezi Rapids. So, how, how how does the story go there? Um, it's it's basically um, I came up with the um, sort of original idea of around the world in in um, eighty days, and then I, 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 I tried to think how I could do that as an album, but it didn't really work. But I started writing. Um, uh, music for, for scenes that are, um, are quite inspirational to me. So, um, I mean, Zambezi Rapids is you know it's the biggest um, uh, river that's running through um, uh, a part of Africa. So, and, did, and, did and you start write writing that, that with with the image of Zambezi Rapids in particular in mind, or or rapids? It, it was fast stream. moving moving um, uh, water uh, in, in Africa, right. um, and then Eastern Dust. That's um, more Middle Middle Eastern kind of sound, um, and then through to African Plain, you've got a more relaxing kind of. 
um, feel um, in, in part of that. Uh, Yangdi Valley, uh, China, rice fields, China. Um, Western Trail, um, that's so back over into, in, into America, and it's a bit of a um, sort of humorous but spaghetti kind of style. Um, spaghetti western kind of style um, track and then you've got Ice Cave uh, into um, Alaska um, Places Part 2 that's another soundscape um, So how long does it take mm. to put all this together? Um, this this album it took me about six months um, from initial concept um, to actually then writing and it, I, I mean I've written a lot, a lot of music um, that yeah. I've then selected no th- this is the way it's got to go and, uh, and you have so to be quite So do you quiet. have a, an idea in your mind how many tracks you want and that sort of thing when you start out or do you write like most people write much more and then cut down that's right yeah yeah write write more and cut down um and um it, i don't necessarily always set out to do that because it means a lot more work um but if you've got a sp- particular message you want to put down in an album then yeah you have to do that you have to busy uh, around here outside <laughs> <laughs> i think somebody's yeah. had an accident but hopefully yeah. it's not just outside <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not but obviously this is uh, you don't do live gigs do you or you, have you asked me to have you asked to do that um not yet no um and uh, i'd need to sort of prepare myself for, i mean i used to gig with my bands but um it's um at the moment i'm i'm uh, 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 sort of producing uh, composer um but uh, i wouldn't say no yeah and what sort of gig would you like to do i could see you being in a kind of a kind of a in a tent of your own in a, in a festival where people would just chill out yeah a, yeah a, well, a chill out tent with your music i think would be quite good yeah and a screen behind you with all sort of images sort of projected onto all nice yeah. colors and stuff yeah with you sort of playing the keyboards or maybe <laughs> I quite like that idea. I don't <laughs> know. Move that forward. Last and budget yeah. auditions. Yeah. Okay. Well, certainly think about Go for it. it. Yeah. Box, yeah, yeah. Box <laughs> jams. Uh, October. Well, I mean, Strawberry Fields. Uh, they had a, a like a dance tent. It wasn't the biggest tent, but you could just go in there, mm. and just a DJ playing, and just have a bop and go out again. Is it? And, like, I, guess, new, yeah. and I guess a chill out. They did have a chill out area, I think, there, but like, I'm not sure how that worked. But I would imagine you'd be ideal for that. That's right. But like they had. Um, have you heard New Walk? A um, young lad, I forget his name, young lad, called, uh, and he's done, um, he, he calls himself New Walk. He plays similar sort of stuff, and he, he named one of his songs after a tent, Ganja Tent, um, right. in Strawberry Fields, because he walked past and he got that sort of image, and I think yours would probably uh, go down well. Probably. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, we, probably. We, we've just about run out of time, so we're going to play Himalayan Bass Camp. Just tell us the story of this track. I think I, think I, I touched on it earlier. Yeah. Um, it's it's the base camp um i had in my mind of um everest base camp um and it's where um all these intrepid um adventurers climbing mount um mount everest uh, set off from okay thank you very much uh so two and a half minutes of this from gj marshall and as you say available to download from most uh, uh, most sites
got Lanier in the studio. We'll be talking to them soon. Uh, before that, uh, interview and music from Grace Petrie, who I saw at the Greenbelt Festival over the weekend. Here's a track from her, first of all, called Changing Shape. To show you every scar my soul achieved since birth To offer up my heart and all its contents to the earth So you can give it all a price tag And tell me what I'm worth But I'm just trying to make you love me I used to think I wrote my words to try and make a spark to light the way for others who were struggling in the dark But now I know I only write them in the hope they'll leave a mark Yeah, I'm just trying to make you love me So tie me to a chair Just a different shape Yeah, I used to be a child And now I'm just a different shape Myself under attack For everything I wish I was And all I'll ever lack Especially for you folks Who are talking at the back Can't you see I'm dying To make you love me That I could use this microphone For stories not like this Where I'm not such a victim You know I'd never take the risk Cause when the curtain falls, tomorrow calls And I'm just a narcissist Who's still trying to make you love me So tie me 
Well, it's a changing shape from uh, Grace Petrie, and uh, I'm at the uh, nice little festival. It's a different festival. Tell me what festival we're at. Uh, it's the Greenbelt Festival 2014. And this is a regular thing for you as well now, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's my fourth year. They, uh, they keep having me back, which is lovely. Well, I've come as a volunteer this year, so I feel like I'm earning my living a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, Singing for your supper. Yeah, but uh, the venue was packed. You must have really enjoyed that tonight. It was amazing. I mean, we, it's always such an amazing gig here, but I think that's probably the best one we've ever had, I think. Um, I mean, you know, a completely packed venue and at the end everyone on their feet and clapping. You, can't, you really can't ask for better than that. I think it's the first time I've seen you with a band, so to speak. Uh, yeah, tell yeah. us a bit about how that came about. Well, I mean, I, I've played with Caitlin for quite a few years um, and then uh, I only started playing with Jess in the last couple of years. But it's just, it's amazing to have so much more kind of versatility with your songwriting because obviously when it's just you and a guitar you know you can't kind of use harmonies or other vocals and things so it's been really and making this last album we made as a full band and it's so rewarding to be able to do those songs on stage and really kind of make a more more of an impact than you can obviously just just on your own with an acoustic we last spoke at the last ever summer sunday when billy bragg yeah. was on the same bill didn't we? absolutely yeah yeah you still keep in touch with billy i'm still in touch with billy yeah yeah i saw him at glastonbury this year um and yeah i mean he He's, he's, he's great, he's still, he always has a kind word to kind of keep the fire lit in you, even when you're feeling the most despondent and dejected and, and like uh, you can't make a change. He always has a way of putting it that makes you realise that, you know, there's more goodies out there than baddies. It's, and you're saying pretty... on stage that you've kind of gone professional, so to speak. Now, yeah. has, that, has that put a pressure on or is it just more relaxing because you've got one thing to focus on? It's, it, it's so different. There are definitely pros and cons. I think it's one of those things that you, uh, I kind of wanted my whole life to get to this position where I was making a living from it. And then when you do, you sort of realize that in a way, there's uh, there's there's just drawbacks as there are in any other job. You know, I do uh, a lot of gigs these days, sort of corporate thing, not corporate things, but I do a lot of sort of benefits uh, for unions and things where, I have a sort of terrible crowd but I have to do it for the money but then you come along and do something like this where you have the most incredible appreciative big crowd and it really makes you think well you know I mean one gig like this really can keep me going for six months you know yeah you're on the high for ages absolutely aren't you? absolutely you know and it's, it's sometimes you have days like this and you think wow this is clearly just the best job in the world the best thing you could be doing you're a very good raconteur on stage. That, that, that obviously comes naturally to you, but I know you're working on trying to fit jokes in and stuff, but that is part of your act, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's funny because I've done so many gigs with comedians now uh, <laughs> that I guess it's starting to rub off on me. You know, I did a tour with JC Long and then a tour with Robin Ince, uh, and I guess you just kind of absorb it. Um, and now these days, you know, I play with a band and they're like, you know, can you shut up long enough to play the songs? <laughs> So yeah, it's, I, I enjoy talking to the audience as well, really enjoy it. There's a big crowd from Leicester here, I know a lot of them are working behind the bar, yeah. and actually they've given points to certain personalities, yeah. I know you're worth 100 points, so I hope you get on, Absolutely. I hope you get to the Jesus songs later. Well, you've twisted my arm. Yeah. Well, in fact, we're, <laughs> no, I know that. In you fact, know. I might threaten to take you there, yeah, just well, for fun, you know, what can I say, I can guzzle beer for the good of mankind, that's what I can do, you know. And what about gigs, you've got a gig coming up in Leicester, I think I heard you mention. Yeah, we're at The Musician uh, on the 11th of September, um, we're, Jasmine Kennedy, who's also here at Greenbelt, is coming and playing with us, uh, which is really amazing, although as I was saying to someone earlier, I think I've shot myself in the foot by booking a support act who's uh, a million times better on the guitar and a lot funnier than me, uh, oh, so no. maybe people will be clearing out by the time we even hit the stage, but it's really, it's a pleasure to play with her. I think you've got a following, I think you've got accept that you've got to follow it it's lovely it's really like you don't want to ever take it for granted but it's really lovely and coming here definitely makes you feel like you're getting somewhere you now, know i've got the album uh, on here that from 2013 where are you we kind of making records these days yeah i mean i'm, I'm still writing quite a lot um I'm, i i have probably about six or seven songs that are unrecorded so i imagine probably in the next six months i'll be thinking about bringing something else out um yeah i mean it's i'm, I'm with songwriting it's so unpredictable you know you can go 
six months without writing anything and then you might write you know four songs in three days so yeah. I just take it as it comes and what about gig going do you go to see a lot of actual is it yeah all? I try to definitely try to I mean that's the absolute blessing of getting booked for a lot of festivals uh, is that you're in this beautiful location and you have maybe an hour's worth of work and then you've got three days to wander around and see loads of bands and, and discover people you know I discovered Jasmine here um, always make fantastic discoveries at Greenbelt um, and yeah so it's 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 really fortunate being in in the business where you just get to see so many amazing acts and what do you think of this new location I mean it's pretty spectacular oh, isn't it? it's gorgeous absolutely beautiful yeah I mean it's almost a shame that it's radio because I wish I could say look around at these amazing grounds but yeah it's definitely a step up from the race course that it was held on before definitely yeah and it's nearer Leicester which I yeah, yeah, absolutely well. yeah, yeah yeah okay it's been great uh, great to have you on what, what other track from the album would you like me to play Oh, if you could play the Redundancy hymn, uh, yeah. that would make me very happy. That's probably my favourite track on the album. Okay, great to see you, and we're going to Jesus' home shortly. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're on you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks yeah, so much. Yeah, definitely, yeah, right, cheers. Thanks ever so much. Okay. Right, we're in the studio with a band called Linear. 
I have to concentrate and get them right. Welcome, chaps. Hey, hey, hey. All right. All right. Would you like to introduce yourselves and yeah, just quickly sure, say yeah. what you're doing um, the band? I'm Jack. I'm the singer for Linear, and on my left is... Uh, go ahead. I'm Jack, also, uh, I'm the guitarist. Excellent. Yeah. Confused, I'm not. I'll just say, hi, <laughs> <laughs> hi Jack, and what are you doing, Jack? All oh, right, okay. So, just briefly, because we're just about to play one of your songs so the listeners can hear what you like, how would you describe your music? How would I describe my music? We've been described as all sorts really but me personally the one that i like the most was a sound engineer who once described us as just moody <laughs> and i like that because we do have a certain mood about us i guess um but it's passionate mood you know it's not just throwing a mardi <laughs> so i'd go for that i think that's how i'd describe it but we like to let everybody else decide for themselves what they think of us so mm. we don't really genre eyes ourselves yet okay as, as you know i sort of uh, think you sound like something in particular or a particular band but we'll we'll uh, rather than suggest that band we'll, we'll play your song first so we're about to play the ground yeah this is the ground is this the debut is this the first time it's ever been played like? yeah this is the first time the public have heard it from the cd so we hope you enjoy it An thanks exclusive here on yeah hermitage it's exclusive on hermitage before we play it though would you just like to say a little bit about it what it's about um now, The Ground's a little bit more of a fast-paced track. I think we just... We really loved playing it instrumental. And I, I love, like... Uh, but I'm the singer, so I haven't got an instrument on me. But I think if I had to nail it down something, The Ground is more about the ups and downs and hitting rock bottom and coming back up and the things that swell around in your head when you're going through that. So that's why I called it The Ground. John, who did that remind you of? 
uh, immediately as a bit of a smith in there. Now, I don't, I, obviously, the the kind of vocal sounds a bit like that, but I was kind of like very, very impressed by by the music, the musicianship in it, if you like, uh, because it's all got to come together. It's all right saying, oh, it sounds like that, but it's got to have, you know, it's got to have quality, and I definitely think it's got quality. So, I mean, obviously, in the production of it, you record it, and the mixing is everything, isn't it, really? Yeah, I think. Uh when we play it live or in the practice room, it's a, it's always a little bit more bluesy, a little bit rawer. But when you're sitting down in the studio, you you, you kind of I don't know. It's hard for me to explain. It's easier. Do you want to talk about it? You're the guitarist. So I don't know. It, <laughs> I have to sit back. It just came out differently. That I, I would say differently than how I first anticipated it. But I th- it came out better than I first thought it would be. It wasn't what I thought it would be, but it was better than I thought it could have been. <laughs> I suppose you can get so close to it. Yeah. You, need, you need somebody else, don't you, just say, yeah, this is what you should do. You need that production, yeah, but don't get, you? getting someone outside to help us record and everything, and then they, they put their input on it, and you think, yeah, that's a good idea, and then that's what helped us make this track. Yeah, it's, it's hard to distance yourself when you're producing your own, own music, um, because you're never content with it you can you can work at it and work at it but you always think it could be better um and we were lucky we recorded uh, in a place called pterodactyl studios which is in narborough and uh, he did a fantastic deal and he worked really hard on it and um it was good to have him to you know to tell you like oh we've been in the room long enough go out i'll finish the track you know because I mean? we need that because y- you just concentrate on it too hard and you overdo it sometimes yeah. and you don't want to do that you just want to get it down and let the professionals do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because when I've seen you live, I mean, you've got, obviously, you've got an operatic quality to your voice, and I think that com- came across in that recording there as well. Yeah, I mean, I was always worried about uh, recording vocals in the studio because when I do play live, it's you, you find a mind state that you go into, and, you know, and I'm just staring into nowhere, basically, but when you're in the studio, you, you have to concentrate sometimes, and it's hard to just let yourself go there. But um, I think, you know, we spent a good three hours maybe before we actually finally got good takes on the vocals because you know when you're live you get a good sound check you get a good practice before and you're warming up but sometimes in the studio you're in there at 8am you know i mean you won't leave till 10 o'clock at night and it's it's not always uh, hard to get into the into the zone per se anyway is there a driving force in the band is there one of you that kind of gets everybody else going or is it kind of equal between you i think we equalize each other out yeah we, we there's no like one writer of the song no jack jack focuses on the lyrics I focus on guitar, drum focus on drums and stuff like that. And me and the other guitarists, we work together and work with the bassist, and then we all just work and make something up. But we don't. We all push each other. That's yeah, how it goes. you have to. Or you know, say if that one person who is the key link has a bad day, then we're all having a bad yeah. day. Then where are we? So and I think I think that. your live performance that comes across as well because uh, all of you have got good stage presence. You're all doing your own thing. You all look natural. Yeah. And there isn't one particular boss. You know, you've not got the show off guitarist, but you're all just confident on the sh- on the stage. Yeah, I think I think that's I much quite needed. like show off guitarist. <laughs> I do in a, in a good rock band. Maybe, yeah, maybe, but this, this is a bit more, a bit tamer. Yeah, we I would suppose. just chuck a spotlight on him, and the rest of it's faded to the shadows. <laughs> That'd be a right. bit too far. But, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. they did have a phase in music, I think, where we, we call it almost stir at your feet music. Uh, I think in the uh, in, uh, there was a phase in there. I think it was in the nineties somewhere. A lot of bands were coming out of stuff which you quite happily just stand still and listen to. Yeah. Uh, and other bands you kind of try to go mental to. Kind of like. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So yeah, you're kind of more stir. More kind of a stare at your feet type. Of yeah, I, I I like to think of it as a more you know, just slowly sway while you listen yeah, to okay, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not stare at your feet. <laughs> you, I, I'm using that as an expression they use yeah. in the NME yeah. a little bit at the time. I think kind yeah. of makes your your thought process go, and so sure. you're not really focusing on what's going on around you, more what you're thinking about. I, so, that's what I took from that phrase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so about your sound then, okay? So you, you sound a little bit like Morrissey, but is is that a deliberate thing, or is that just the way you happen to end up? Oh, okay, um, that's just your voice. Yeah, I'm, I mean, well, I'll tell you the little story of what it happened. Was like the day that I got this the band together, um, put us all in a room, and I went in there thinking I was going to sing like Alex Turner from Arctic Monkeys. That that was what I used to sing like back in my bedroom. Like, oh, I can yeah. sing. Well, you have to um, imitate somebody's song. Yeah, yeah, that's how you start. And we went in there and, you know, grabbed a few beers because we didn't really know each other that well at the beginning of it. And then, you know, I was a bit drunk. <laughs> uh, fair to say I was drunk. And um, 
I just, you know, I started imitating like a like kind of operatic type voice. It wasn't. I didn't have Morrissey in the back of my head. I didn't. I didn't really listen to the Smiths at all that back then. And then I just started working on that because people started to like that a little bit more than Alex Turner's my impression of Alex Turner anyway. So that's how it came about, and it was just through so not you, me choosing it. So you went away and listened to Morrissey sing a bit after that. <laughs> when, when, when people said, "Oh, you sound a bit like him," <laughs> yeah. um, I don't. Not really. No. I mean. No. No, because I'm. We were young back then, and like, like nowadays, if you go to like certain you were clubs, young, bo- sorry, you were young back then. Yeah, well, <laughs> sixteen. <laughs> think we were sixteen, and now yeah, twenty. Just uh, seventeen. Seems like a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, two years. Anyway, a lot could change in those those four years. Anyway, and I didn't. You know, you don't really get surrounded by music. It's only like what you. I, I listen to a lot of like metal and that, and you, I didn't know what the Smiths were. Where would I listen to the Smiths? And then as I went up to a little more bars and clubs, you start being aware of a bit more different types of music and stuff like that. And then I started hearing the Smiths, and I could understand when people were like, "Yeah, you sound so like him." It's like, so it's, it's yeah. like it's it's just your natural sound. Then it's, I, it's I, not, I, I, it's I not a stage. So. No, it's a coincidence okay. more than anything. yeah. I would, I've never tried to imitate. Anyway, uh, somebody says you're coming across on the radio well, and they look forward to seeing you live on my uh, phone. Yeah, that'll be fantastic. I have to say, that will be a fantastic gig on Friday, but we'll talk about that yeah. a little bit later. Should, little we, bit should later. we play your next song now? Yeah, go ahead. Go this one's Cast, casting letters, this one. Before we do play it, though, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about <laughs> it. <laughs> we have to have the story. Right? Yeah, uh, this is um, actually the name of the EP, which we'll talk about afterwards, is Casting Letters. Um, casting Letters, it's, uh, it's more about when you're thinking about saying something or when you do say things and you don't really mean it and you're just chucking words around and it's casting letters was because sometimes when people say certain things to you it can really change what you're feeling that's why it's like casting a spell it might be just one sentence might be one word might be a whole rant so i like the thought that only words alone and you only hear those words they can change your personality and your feelings at the time
that was fantastic <laughs> so that's that's going to be on your EP, is it the new EP or yeah, LP? Yeah, in, that's indeed. A, that's the uh, t- title track almost. It's named after that track, Casting Letters. Okay, because I've seen a lot of uh, you, th- your gig on Friday. Is that an album release gig or is it? An we, EP it's it's an EP, which is extended play. So it's more than a single, not quite an album. But ah, I see. Obviously, every, you have to explain it all the time to say mini album. Really, it makes it a bit simpler. Yeah, I, mean, I remember EPs. I'm old enough. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. is, for you that don't know, it stands for extended play. Mm-hmm. So you'd normally get four or five tracks on it rather than just two yeah. or something. So yeah, it's more of an EP. We, we like to think of it as an epic playlist now. So. <laughs> but you guys have been around a little while now, haven't you? Haven't you got enough material to put, make oh, an LP? God, yeah. We've got enough money, though. That's yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, between... I mean, when we started, it was, you know, it was a hard transition we, people were just getting jobs they were just leaving school and joining university so it's hard to find the time and this summer's been that kind of summer as well where we thought we'd get it all done and have enough money but really it's been you know a lot of work pushing down on a lot of the band members and they've not been able to get the time off and stuff like that so we're looking to extend this to a full-on album and i'm talking like an eight track album because we have more than enough material that we would love to put down on a cd because we'd love working in the studio environment and finally capturing those songs that you you really don't want to ever forget about you oh, know because right. I mean? they do slip away if you've not got enough time to practice and, them. and you've formed a relationship with that studio i guess that's the important thing as well yeah yeah it? pterodactyl studios like um there's a guy called uh, anthony pike and yeah he he really came down spent a lot of time you know listening to us in the practice rooms watching us live getting the gist and you really need that someone who gets the gist of what you are live before they want to record you because how would they know what to capture you know mm. what I mean so it was mm. fantastic to see someone go that extra mile and that's why I definitely went with him and I, I would suggest it to anybody Pterodactyl Studios so is this your first EP then uh, yeah, yeah this yeah, is our first, first recorded yeah. stuff so we, why, why is it taking you so long to get your first EP out I mean how, <laughs> how long have you been it, around well I've been writing gig reviews about it for <laughs> years. It takes about a year before I think we thought, oh, we might be up to this. And then by then I was going to university. We would look oh, school. Yeah, we had old, either go yeah. college into work. And we, we had someone who worked nine till five and then another one of the members who worked in a casino all night. So, so, night. <laughs> so between uh, and trying to practice and continue to gig and... Um, that cost money as well buying new equipment because you know when we started we were you know tiny little practice bass amp and sure, you know, so, 90 pound stag so and now, would you say now that you're taking the band a bit more seriously then yeah yeah I mean right. we focus on it you know they look very they serious on the front cover I'm trying <laughs> to find out I'm trying to discover whether that's the toilet floor they're sitting on <laughs> not quite either. believe it or not that is uh, a tiny little place next to the Charlotte um we used oh, yeah. to be, like, rest of when we used to, to do around. well when I used to go to gigs there back when it was open um, to go down there and watch we used to have a cigarette and I used to stand and look down in this little bit it's a few steps if anybody goes near the Charlotte's on the left side and it goes down to this kind of little grotty bit that's pointless really okay. just steps and I just used to look at it and I thought that'd be a cool place for a bum picture and it actually worked out quite nicely because uh, and nobody's smiling I know <laughs> <laughs> nobody ever it, smiles it was, pro- cold, it was a cold day we oh, were okay. all really okay. happy but it's time we like, oh, freezing so take the picture <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's to go with a moody image <laughs> yeah moody sound yeah okay so what about upcoming gigs festivals and things mm, strawberry fields I mean now, I saw yeah. strawberry fields last year didn't I and yeah we did it last year um, that was fantastic really enjoyed yeah, it yeah loved it when we got offered I was like I thought it was pretty amazing mm. and we played it and I, d- I did in my head think oh man a thousand people which stage were you on last year just a strawberry jam stage yeah mm. Jimmy Jimmy Jeff, that was brilliant that was in- indoors wasn't it that was mm. excellent yeah. That, was yeah. Really nice. that was one yeah. of my favourite because I, I was gigs. actually introducing bands in another tent so I can't remember which you introduced me yeah, you I, was, really I, did you, yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking. I'm sure I'd, I'd seen you. Yeah, so, yeah. And I was. I hadn't clicked that it was that one. So I did do yeah, that. It was, all, it was all a bit rushed uh, backstage and stuff it like was, that. It was. That's how the festival is. You there have to you get go. The bands on quick. It just happens. Isn't yeah, it? it does. Yeah. But you're not doing any more then festival. Well, shows. we are like like. This summer, it was like, we did have offers and festivals, and it was like, great, we did this festival, can you do it, can you do it, can do it? And then one of the band members was like, I can't do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've, Someone's I've got this, so, or, you know, yeah. I've got this work day, and if I get it off, they'll fire me, and I need the money to run my car, and, and well, you know, so it's nothing you well, can it's do often sometimes. with young bands, I mean, we're ta- I was talking to a young band the, the other week, and, you know, one of them's moving to London, somebody's going to college or yeah. whatever, and you have to kind of work around that thing. Yeah, and, and, and we've managed to work around it for the past two years, and finally, we're, you know, we're getting to the point where you know we've made time uh, for you know 
to dedicate it only mm-hmm. to the band and you know sacrifices can now start being made because you found a bit of a footing in life when before you know it was a bit up and everywhere trying to get a job when you've got a job they don't really respect you because you're new and you're yeah, young and and this, especially yeah. if you've got five members to the band yeah well, yeah it is it's hard getting five well. people together in one place at one time yeah, yeah. i can imagine found that